All right, in this video, we are going to talk about Atwood's machines where the pulleys have mass. So really, this is just any problem where the pulley has mass. Let's draw a pulley, and we'll say that that pulley has a mass of m, which I'm just going to wrap to the sign, and maybe a radius, and we'll call that radius uh, a capital R. Then on the left side, you're going to have an object hanging. We could call this m1. Um, let's just go ahead and say that it's twice as big as the pulley, and so we'll call it 2m. And on the right side, you have another object that's hanging. And let's say it's three times as big as the pulley. We could call it M2 if we wanted, or M3, but we're going to say 3M, because M is our, our common measure um, where the mass of the pulley is M. Maybe it's a kilogram, maybe it's 10, I don't know. Now, in this problem, we are going to try and find the linear acceleration. Now, usually in a physics question, you want to find the linear acceleration so that you can use it to find out maybe the speed of one of the boxes before it hits the ground, um, or perhaps how much time it takes for that box to hit the ground. But if we're interested in the linear acceleration of the 3M box or maybe the 2M box, then what that means, and this is important, is that we are interested in the linear acceleration of the outer edge of the pulley. Now here's why that's important. We know that this pulley will have some angular acceleration, which we can call alpha. And if I wanted to find the linear acceleration at a radius of r, at its outer edge, then I would just multiply the angular acceleration by that radius and get the linear acceleration a. This is a key for us that we need to use um, to be able to to relate this to our net force equations. All right, so let's start by taking a look at the 2m block and the 3m block and the forces that are acting on them. On the 2m block, there is a weight force down, which we can call 2mg. And then there is some tension in the rope, which we can call T. For the 3m block, there is a weight force down, 3mg, and some tension acting up that we could also call T. Now, normally, if the pulley has no mass, and this is just a good old Atwood's machine problem, you can just go ahead and say that the tension is the same on either side of the pulley. However, because the pulley has mass, that means that it's going to affect the acceleration of this system. And what we need to do is we need to um, take note of the fact that both of these tensions are pulling down on the pulley. And the left side is going to be different than the right side. So we call those T1 and T2. Now, to focus on our 2M block, uh, we're going to maybe decide that clockwise is the positive direction of motion. So I'm going to write an equation for the 2M block. T1 is going to be positive, and I will subtract 2mg. Then I set that equal to the mass of that object, 2M times the acceleration A. Okay, now for the second block, or the 3M block, down is now positive, so I would say 3mg minus t2 is equal to the mass times acceleration, or 3m times a. All right, if this was a normal Atwood's machine problem, I would be able to cancel out the tensions, but since there's a t1 and a t2, I can't do that. And instead, I need to think about the torques that are acting on the pulley to find a third equation that lets me eliminate t1 and t2. So if I think about the torques that are going to be caused from these tensions, T1 is going to cause a torque that we call tau1, and T2 will cause a torque that we call tau2. Now, in the same way that net force is, you know, for most of these, it's going to be like a T minus a T equals MA, net torque is actually, in this case, we'll make T or tau2 positive because it's clockwise minus tau1. We know that this won't equal mass times acceleration, but instead the rotational inertia i times the angular acceleration alpha. Now for a disk, i is one half mr squared. And if this was an AP question, they would tell you one half mr squared is what you should use for i. So I'm going to plug that in. One half mr squared. Now alpha, we already talked about, is actually going to be the acceleration divided by the radius, right? I can write acceleration over the radius. So if I plug that in, I'm going to get a over r, and immediately I see that I can get rid of that r squared and the r um, down under. 
the acceleration. Okay, so I'm just going to erase those. So it's a little bit easier to see what's on the right hand side. Okay, so now I'm going to take care of these taus, tau 2 and tau 1. Each of these torques is just going to be the tension multiplied by the radius because these tensions are perpendicular to the radius. So you don't need to use sine or sub some angle. So tau 2 is really t2 times r and tau 1 is really t1 times r. And hopefully you see that every term has an r so I can get rid of it. t2 minus t1 equals 1 half ma. Awesome. This is my third equation that I can now use to eliminate t1 and t2. If I add the left sides together and I add the right sides together, then t1 cancels out, t2 cancels out, and I get 3mg minus 2mg equals 2 plus 3 plus a half, so 5 and a half, which is 11 halves. If I'm wrong, please, oh my gosh, let me know. Uh, and so 3mg minus 2mg is just mg. I can eliminate m, and I now know that the acceleration is going to be equal to 2 times the acceleration due to gravity over 11, which if g is 10 meters per second squared, then that's going to be 1.818 or 1.82 meters per second squared. Great. You did it. You're so smart. Yay.